Hey folks, welcome to Power Pivot Pro. Today we're going to be talking about dynamic segmentation in Power Pivot and a new twist to it where you can use a variable grain range selection. Oh my god, what does that even mean? Let's take a look. So here's what dynamic segmentation essentially looks like or tries to do. When you have a, let's say a long list of products which would add different list prices and, and you know I can see the sales amount for each one of these but this is too much data for me to absorb right away. So what I really want to do is I want to segment these or band these into price ranges so I can see how much am I selling off my low priced items on these guys maybe and how much am I selling off my high priced items. So a very powerful technique and let's see uh, it in action. So here we are and you'll see where the word dynamic comes from. So here I have my bands defined and you can see the distribution but it's dynamic because I can make any selection here so I can select a specific year, uh, a specific category and so on and so forth and it's going to respond to that. So really really cool and effective but you're seeing part of the problem right away. And the problem with this is that once once your range is defined, it's kind of static and set. And you may encounter that maybe your data changes over time, you include some new data, um, uh, or uh, most likely as you're slicing and dicing your data, the set ranges may no longer work. They'll either prove to be too granular or not granular enough. Well, how do we get around that? What if we could define a range to be of a variable grain that we can select ourselves. For example, if we look at a table here, we see the breakdown in thousands, which is the same as what we saw before, but now we can drill down and see more detail in, in a specific unit. So here we can see details in hundreds. And if you wanted to, we could drill even deeper. And, and you can see, you can set it up however you want, and it gives you a lot more flexibility in analyzing your data. Uh, if you want it, uh, you could uh, only show the hundreds. Let's see how that looks like. All right, so there you go. This is, uh, you know, at the grain of $100 segments. And you could grow more gran granular and only show the grain in tens. Uh, so, yeah, it gives you a lot more flexibility in analyzing your data set. So, let's see how we would go on about getting this done. First of all, let's quickly review how dynamic segmentation works itself. The technique is pretty standard now. Um, you use a disconnected table with defined ranges. So in this case, I've defined as such, so 0 to 1000, minimum, max, and so on and so forth. And it's a disconnected table, and you can see that right here in the model diagram. It's not connected to any of the other tables via a relationship. And the way you leverage a disconnected table is using a measure. So you can define something like this and this gives you the desired behavior. Now I can use my uh, defined range and see what my sales are for that particular band or segment. But again, the challenge is that what if I want to see more detail? What if I want to change this range or segment later? In order to implement variable grain in our dynamic segmentation, we're going to take the exact same steps. We're going to define a disconnected table and then define a measure we're going to just do it slightly differently. So first of all, our range table is going to look different. It's going to have these columns which are going to define essentially our variable grain. So we have the tens, hundreds, and thousands. And next, our measure definition is also going to be slightly different based on the table. But essentially these two steps would give us the behavior we're looking for. So check out how I can use the variable grain uh, to explore the data in PowerView. Uh, so of course I have uh, uh, the slicers here, so I'm being shown the sales amount by these price range buckets and thousands. But PowerView has this functionality which offers you drill down. So I can just uh, double click on 1000 and see the detail within that. So I can see, you know, I see sell some products. 
around less than 100 um, and then less than 600 less than 800 and so forth and I can come back up and I can examine the other buckets say hey how does a 1000 to 2000 bucket look like and so on and so forth check out our blog article for some more detail and additional considerations around this folks hope you enjoyed that go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel or navigate to our blog and there you can subscribe to our blog as well